Hello all you wonderful people out there, this is John from Moby and you're watching Burning Music. You're touring Germany right now and it's sold out right now. So how does it feel to have a completely sold out tour in a, in a whole country outside of Denmark? Feels good. Yeah. I mean, Germany in some ways has almost become our second home. Uh, we toured a lot in Germany over the years. Uh, and it is a big country, but uh, Germany was one of the few countries, maybe the first countries outside of Denmark that we took, took on to us. So we are very proud and we are very happy that we can present it. And this is so that to you. Uh, right. And is it also one of the reasons why uh, you decided to um, took a concert from Germany on your um, actual DVD on uh, Rock and Ring? <coughs> yeah, definitely. I mean, the Rock and Ring shows has always been very good to us. Uh, and this year uh, we played on the main stage and I had a very good spot yeah. and there were, I don't know how many people, but there were a uh, lot of 80,000. Something like that, yeah. yeah. So it was actually a no-brainer. And said, so, well, if we can get all of some of the footage from that show, we're definitely going to use it. All right. And speaking of the new DVD, um, you have three shows in them, one in Anaheim in the uh, in US, mm -hmm. then in Copenhagen, mm -hmm. you know, um, and one in Germany. And there, um, the audiences are very different by, by number. I mean, yeah. you have 10,000 in Denmark, yeah. 1,000 in the US, and 80,000 in, uh, in the US, and uh, uh, in Germany. Um, do you feel any difference when you play that shows? I mean, from so many people to so many people? Or do you prefer one kind of a show? No, it's all good, you know, no matter if it's small or big, it doesn't really matter. I mean, some shows can have, can have some advantages that, mm -hmm. that other shows don't have. I mean, if you're playing, <coughs> excuse me, like we did at, at the long run, playing in front of 8,000, yeah. you can't reach everybody, yeah. which you can in a small club like the Anaheim shows. Mm -hmm. but we just did it because we thought it could be interesting for, for people and for ourselves, you know, to see how this is how the band looks in a smaller club, this is how it looks with the main stage, and this is how it looks in one of the biggest festivals in, in Europe. Yeah. But you're going uh, more far away from the smaller clubs because your band's going to be uh, is much bigger than years mm -hmm. before you played smaller clubs. I can remember it was you. You were playing for about you know a couple of hundred people, and today there are about six thousand mm -hmm. already. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I don't know. Um, what do you think will be the next step for you? I mean, you play with so uh, such big bands. You mm -hmm. played with Metallica. You're going to play in the US with Megadeth and Motorhead, mm -hmm. which are legends. I mean, um, must be a dream come true. Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, <laughs> it's kind of funny because we we did play. With I think two shows with Megadeth a few years ago, I think 2008, I think it was. Yeah, but the big four? No, 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 it was before the, no, it was, no, it was actually, a, a Megadeth was headlining oh, the right. tour and they invited us to play with them in Finland, actually, which was very good for us because that was one way to open the Finnish market, actually, and then we played with them in Copenhagen, I think, a few days later. Mm -hmm. uh, Michael has met Dave a few times and, and talks a lot with him when they meet up and stuff like that, so, when that offer came along, you know, there was just say yes, please. And I mean, people have often asked us which band would you like to tour with. Now they play with all of them. <laughs> since we play with a lot of them, and we always say Motorhead. You know, all right. We would always love to go on tour with Motorhead. So now we got the best of both worlds, actually. Maybe with Motorhead. Is there actually any band left you want to tour with? Um, yeah, there's always a few bands left. I mean, we, we actually haven't toured with. We haven't before. really played with Iron Maiden actually. Ah, all right. They did headline the Sonic Sphere show this year. I think it was in Poland. I think it was in Poland where we were playing, but that doesn't really count. Yeah. But so yeah, definitely Maiden would be a cool opportunity to go out with Iron Maiden actually. Okay. So um, you played the show in Copenhagen on the, uh, on the DVD mm -hmm. and there were so many guest appearances by so many musicians and um, how did you manage to, to um, get all of them to one show? I mean, uh, it, took, it took a bit of work actually to make it all happen and it, it was a bit stressful that whole day. Um, first of all because we were playing in our home city in front of the solar crowd of 10,000 and mm -hmm. then it was decided why not see if we can bring all the guests from all the albums basically yeah, yeah, together. Yeah. I mean Barney from Napalm couldn't be there. Yeah, LG from Intune yeah. went up and did that. And then, um, the two other singers that's, that sings the names from the Garden's Tale and, and uh, Penny Lou does um, 
Miriam's plays, they always come up if we're playing yeah, in Denmark actually, if, if they got the time, they'll always there be was there. Miller from Creator. Miller from, we've talked to Miller and said, hey, you know, we're doing this huge show, do you want to come up and, and do it? He was like, sure, we'll. So that was, it was kind of easy to get hold of him. Unfortunately, yeah. Creator wasn't on tour at that point. So. Yes, and that was quite surprising to me as I saw the DVD for, yeah, the, for the first time. We, um, we talked to him and said, hey, do you fancy come to Berlin and, you know, and do the show? And he's like, yeah. So um, I've seen um, some uh, the behind the scenes footage um, and um, um, Anders, the guitar player, said that you had and enough time to uh, to practice with all of the musicians to, uh, did it that day. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, was it difficult for you to play that show with any... Yeah, uh, you banned it on, the, um, on tape for the DVD, so many things could happen. Oh, it shouldn't happen. Oh, but it, but it uh, looked like um, everything went right. Uh, I seem to recall everything went right. Um, I, it's over a year ago, so I don't really remember if there were any huge mistakes. There probably were mistakes, but it is. Yeah, not me, I think. Uh, but yeah, it, fortunately, because it was a bit like a circus, because then this one has to come in, this one has to go out, this one has to come in. But I think it worked pretty smoothly, actually, in, in the end, you know. So um, you're touring almost every year. Mm -hmm. So um, do you plan after this tour to make another album or uh, want to want to break for a couple of months or a year or more? Because uh, there's always an album, then a tour yeah, cycle. Yeah, yeah. It's going um, on like that. We don't really fancy taking a whole year off. That, that would be too much. So you like the road? Yeah, well, that's what we do, you know. Yeah, we like playing on the road. We like coming to new cities, new countries. Um, but after the Megadeth the Mega Motorhead tour, um, I don't really know what's going to happen. I think we're going to take some time off, actually, and probably hide ourselves in the first room and try to come up with, with some new stuff right, for, for the next album. Yeah, um, is it still the same fun as it was years ago? I mean, playing from, for in front of new crowds uh, all around the world. I mean, um, experience um, new, new crowd mm. all around the world with uh, encounters you've never been before. It's always exciting, you know. If, if, it's, if it turns into, I think, that if it's not exciting anymore, then it becomes like a pain for you. And then people will actually know that. I mean, people today are smart. They can see that if you're just going through the motions, you know. Um, so for us, it's still exciting. Uh, I think the day when it's not exciting anymore, I think that's it. You know, right. right. Then we're going to pack it in. You have, as you said before, you have many uh, featurings with mm -hmm. many musicians. Mm -hmm. um, is, are there any plans for uh, another featuring with somebody? Uh, no, or, uh, or, no, or a candidate that you want to have on your next well, album? I could think of a few people that I yeah. thought it would be fun, um, but it, that's way too early to say. I mean. A lot of the, the interviews that both Michael and I have done over the last few days it has one of the more questions, who are you going to work with next time? And we both say, well, we don't know, we may not work with anybody next time. I mean, okay. Because there's been somebody on basically every album, so maybe there won't be anybody on the next time, or maybe there will. I mean, everybody keeps asking and say, oh, aren't you going to get James Hetfield to do something for the next album? It's like, I don't think so, but who knows? Fun to have to maybe, we, maybe we're going to use Lou Reed. No, I, <laughs> or maybe not. Maybe. Yeah, I don't know what you're doing. Yeah, yeah. Go on. No, but that's way too early to say. I mean, if, if Michael comes up with something where you say we uh, can maybe hear another yeah. voice or another guitar or whatever, yeah. and he, he would probably by then always. Yeah, yeah. especially these, these songs are the ones who uh, show the, crowd, uh, the people how many influences you have. Yeah. And there's uh, quite a difference between songs like. I don't know, there's no featuring it uh, like $16 and, mm. and 7 shots. I mean, 7 shots is almost a trash metal, uh, trash yeah, it got uh, it, song. It, yeah, it $16 got the, is almost uh, a yeah, like complete rockabilly song. Yeah. Kind of, yeah, that's why we had Jacob from, from Tiger Tones to play Slap Bass. Yeah, yeah. Because that's yeah. what he said. I mean, to get Miller to participate in something, it has to be something that's not a rip off of Creative, of course, but something yeah, course. that maybe a slight idea that maybe Creative would have used or something. And yeah, it's the same thing with Barney, you know. We didn't want to rip off it on dead, but like, on the other hand, we needed something kind of a punch song, right? Uh, you have the song with Barney. Um, and um, did he ever play the song live if you on stage? He just did in England actually about yeah. two, two weeks ago. Uh, uh, we were right. playing in London 
and uh, he actually stepped right off a plane from Canada, went straight to London and almost straight up on stage. He slept for like an hour and a half or something. Right. So, yeah, we got him to do it in London. That was really killer. Yeah, I would really like to know what, what are your biggest influences right now on your music writing? So what, is, uh, what inspires you to do what you do? Right. Yeah. Me personally? Or? Yeah, yeah, you personally. I mean, you can speak for the other ones. Yeah. Well, I can't speak for the other. You know, yeah, I don't yeah. know what they, what they would feel. But I mean, no, it's still, for me, it's still the old school kind of drumming. Uh, it always has been. I mean, all the, the new players like, in the live movies like Jimmy Joyce, for instance. Yeah, He's a brilliant drum, drummer, but I can't do what he did. He's too terrible for me. So for me, it's still that I get to be the biggest kick out of still watching, for instance, David Martin. He is the king, no matter what. Uh, or maybe a guy like me from a brain for I really adore his drumming as well. Yes. Yeah. Does it have to be technical just to be good? No. 